Hey, it's Matt from Practice Perfect. Welcome back to the Accelerated Learning Center. Today we're going to learn about how to set up assessment and treatment fee codes. Let's get started. Step 1. Fee codes are the basis for all the money that you will be bringing into your clinic. Each fee code represents a service or product that you're offering, such as physical therapy treatment, 45-minute massage, or ice pack. To access your list of fee codes, select Housekeeping, Financial, and then Fee Codes from the menu bar. Step 2. Practice Perfect comes preloaded with a pick list of the most common CPT codes used by physical, occupational, and speech therapists, as well as chiropractors and mental health professionals. However, all pricing will be set to zero by default. Take note of the information available to you from this view. The code, a description, payer rate, rate string, and location. You can also use the search bar at the top of the list to easily find a specific fee code. To add a fee code, select the green plus sign from the function bar. This will bring you to the fee code detail view. This view can also be reached by double clicking an existing fee code. Because most of your fee codes come preloaded in Practice Perfect, your primary task will be pruning the ones that you don't need and then setting up pricing and further customization for the existing fee codes rather than creating them. Step 3. There are a total of three tabs comprising the fee code. Fee, Payer Rates, and Provider Types. Let's start with the Fee tab. The Fee tab has been divided into five different sections. Description, Defaults, Rate, Charge Taxes, and Usage Rule. And today, I'm going to walk you through each one of them one by one. The very first field you will notice in the Description section is Location. This field is generally left untouched unless the service is only offered at one location. Next we have the code field. This is typically a CPT code, but you can always use your own for any special services that you offer. We recommend choosing something simple that's recognizable at a glance. For example, if you're creating a fee code for a worksite assessment, you may want to call this code something like WORKAX. Then, use the field directly below to write a brief description of the code. This is the description that will appear on actual invoices. Check off the Can Change Description box if you want to be able to make adjustments to the description as it's being entered during each patient's visit. While the description is changed on the invoice, the actual fee code's description will remain the same. This only affects client and generic invoices, as HICFAs, eHICFAs, and EDI 837 invoices have their own style that doesn't account for these descriptions. Next, you will choose the ledger account to which the revenue will be attributed, such as workers' comp revenue. Note that a fee code can only be associated with one account. You will notice that this defaults to treat which is all that is required for most clinics. If you need a hand adding additional revenue ledger codes, please contact our support department. Next, you will choose the category you'd like to assign the fee code to by using the drop-down list next to Fee Type. The system will choose Treatment by default if this field is left blank. This is mainly used for reporting summary purposes and does not have to do with billing in any way. Please note that if you are setting up a fee code for a product and not a service, you will need to click the product checkbox next to the code. This enables you to enter additional information about this product, such as the supplier and the cost price. Notice that selecting this option enables another tab entitled Inventory discussed in part 2 of this tutorial. Step 4. Once that is done, move on to the fields in the default section. 
The next few fields were set up by default during installation and generally will not require any changes. However, an explanation is warranted should you wish to add your own fee codes. The default section is directly related to practice perfect's ability to track funding maximums allotted to any given patient and calculate extended prices based on units, quantity, or time. The default duration is the amount of time that treatment being provided usually takes. Default visits represents the number of visits that the service counts for against any set funding maximum. For an assessment or treatment, this is generally set to 1. For a report, product, or any other non-hands-on fee, such as a cancellation fee or a copay, it is generally left blank. If the fee code is meant for anything other than a treatment or assessment, default quantity should be set to 1. There should not be a case where a fee has both a default quantity and a default visit. If the fee code is billed based on a unit, which CPT codes are, then default units should contain one, or the number of units you normally charge for this particular service. Again, this will usually have been set to one by default. In some jurisdictions, units are calculated based on the number of minutes taken to perform a service. If this is the case in your jurisdiction, input the time it takes to perform the service in time per unit, and the number of units will be calculated based on the length of the appointment. Please don't change this unless specifically instructed by our support department. Unfortunately, this does not work for the Medicare 8-minute rule. Step 5. Next, you're going to want to set the default price of your treatment or assessment in the rate section. Practice Perfect is pretty flexible in the way that you can set your rates. Please note that you will usually use the per unit option for CPT codes. But for any other fee codes, the very first option is flat fee. Select this option if you'll always be charging the same for this service regardless of the time spent performing it. Per items ought to be chosen if you're creating a fee code for a product, report, mileage fee, copay, or anything else not treatment related. Items with a default quantity of 1 are generally priced using this option. Per visits should be selected if you wish to charge patients per treatment in the same manner as you would a product. Use per minutes if you want to base the amount you're charging on the minutes spent providing the service. For example, if you want to charge $25 per 15 minutes instead of a $50 flat fee for half an hour of service, this is where you make that designation. The last option is per units, which is most commonly used with CPT codes. This is where you would specify that your fee is $20 per unit as an example. Note that this is what you will need to do for all of the CPT codes that you use on a regular basis. It's important to note that the total values for each service will be respected based on the settings you input during treatment entry. For example, if rate entered for a specific CPT code is $20 per unit and you enter 4 units while billing a patient, the total fee will be calculated as being $80 or 4 times 20. Step 6. If you charge sales tax on any of the products or services that you offer, please contact our support department for information on how to set this up. Step 7. The final section we're going to talk about in this video is the usage rules. The first field in this section is the text box where you can write out any comments pertaining to the usage of this fee code. Go through the check boxes to the right of the comment sections and check off the items that are applicable to this fee code. Please note that these have already been set to their usual defaults. They are as follows. Check this box if the fee should never be charged to a payer, such as a cancellation fee, or perhaps an ice pack, or a copay fee code. Split info required is an advanced function that doesn't apply to most users. This should be skipped. 
progress note required indicates that a daily note needs to be entered if this service was performed, and any reports indicating missing daily notes will be triggered based on this setting. And on top of that, Practice Perfect will automatically create a progress note if this box is checked. Typically, any treatment or assessment related services should have this option checked off if you are in fact using Practice Perfect for your electronic medical records. Medicare and many other payers differentiate between a timed and untimed fee code. A timed fee code is one that is being billed based on how much time was being spent performing the treatment, such as mobilization or exercises. An untimed fee code is one where the amount of time taken doesn't matter. It's the same fee, such as an assessment in most cases. This box should be checked off accordingly by default. If the fee code represents a PQRS code, this box should be ticked. Again, this should be checked off by default upon installation. And finally, if the fee code represents a functional limitation reporting G code, this box should be ticked. And as above, this should already be done by default. Thanks for visiting. Be sure to check out our other accelerated learning videos at practiceperfectemr.com. See you soon.